and hello everyone. This is Angel Terry here with some more Dragon Age Origins. So, I had gotten myself the Ranger book. So, if I go to level up, I can now pick Ranger as my specialization. Okay. Yay, veteran. So what that does is when I level the next time when I get a skill point, I could start putting the skill points into the ranger abilities. Okay. Now, I also picked up defensive fire because I want to get the master archer that's after that so I can wear heavier armor for my girl. All right. So let's do a new save. LP 42. And I did some selling and I bought the rest of the Blood Dragon's plate and the like because Sten is almost at 38. He'll need at least two levels before he can use that. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But right now we still have a lot of items and mainly they're gifts. So what I want to do... Oh, I'm loving those too. So what I want to do is I want to look through the crap I have here of things that I can give the people. So a small gold bar. I'll just do this today because it's just, this is what's really bringing up my uh, crap. All right. See, I could still look at these people here. So is that room? I shall treasure it. Thank you. Yeah, of course you will. Because there's a reason we need to get him to like us. <laughs> because if not, we're going to be in trouble. Alright, a black grimoire. Okay, that is... Yeah, no win. Morgana. What? You found Flemeth's grimoire? Ever since we discovered the condition of the Mage's Tower, I had wondered if it might be recoverable. But I had yet to speak of it to you. How fortunate that you found it on your own. Hmm. You have my thanks. I will begin study of the tome immediately. Um, what do you hope to find within it? Secrets. My mother has many of them, and this tome represents the one time that they were able to get away from her. I do not intend to squander this opportunity to learn more than Flemeth wished me to know. This should be... Interesting. Oh, wow. Okay, so essentially what it was is I believe there's a point where Morgan tells you that she feels something up kind of like with her mother, like her mother is um, training her or molding her for something, but she doesn't know exactly what. And the information is in Flemeth's grimoires. But of course, one of the grimoires is in Flemeth's hut, which we can't get to. I think it's in that locked chest. But the other one she talks about of a grimoire that the mages had, which was this. The, um, the black grimoire, which was in Irving's quarters. So it looks like you can give them the items, even if they don't talk about it. So that's good. Because I just have too much crap. All right, now what else do we have here? Whoops. All right, now I know Andraste's grace uh, goes to you. Where are you? Flowers? For me? Oh, they smell lovely. And there's something so familiar about them. These, these were my mother's flowers. She would sprinkle the dry petals amongst her clothes. Oh, they smell just like her. Thank you so much. Now, she does tell you, if you talk to her, I believe she mentions that with the thing or something. I don't know. Like I said, we'll, we'll get to, I'll get to a video where we can still talk about, the, talk to the people. But uh, these things are just packing up my crap. All right, I think you are for a character we don't have yet. If I'm right. Where are you? Yeah, okay. Where 
Ruins which are geological history. Mm -hmm. Okay, this goes to win. A generous gift. Thank you ever so much. All right, that should be two. Yep, okay. The Rose of Orlay. A generous gift. Thank you Thank ever you so, so much. much. Silver chain. Huh. Yeah, Morgan also likes jewelry. I am grateful. Tis thoughtful indeed. A fine gift. You have my thanks. You can find more of those. That's cool. Okay, so you, a bronze symbol of Andraste. I. That's a wonderful thought. I don't know what to say. Thank you, would be good. Chant tree amulet. Okay, that's really... Oh, how dear of you. Thank you so much. He just likes them anyway. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we got... Wow. Got a bunch of stuff here. Alright. Now let's see here. Da, 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 da. Because it says, simply put, dog loves bones. You can give other companions a small approval bump with one of the game's bones. And yes, dog doesn't need to be any more loyal than he is, but can you really do that to the poor beast? Nah. Nah, we want to do that. There is, uh, if you don't have the walkthrough book like I do, there are tons of uh, web pages out there that can tell you uh, the gifts for all your companions. Alright, do we have any more? Oh, yeah, we do. All right, silver bracelet. That's not for you. What about Severin? Severin likes gold bars and the like. Hmm. Okay, so I don't see anybody for that. What do we got here? A shiny gold ring. No. I think the tribal necklace, though, is for you. Yeah. Morgan here. Interesting. Because mostly you have, like, the other ones, like the silver bracelet, the steel bracers and stuff. I think you could give just for, like, Interesting. a bump of, like, one... You have excellent taste. How nice. Shut up and take it. Alright, now these guys here are actually used for something. Does it change on who I'm supposed to give it to? Me? There's a reason why you want to be careful because those ones will bring it all the way up to a hundred. As I will show you. But first. Let's talk to Alistair. We haven't talked to him for a while. Let's see if there's anything new. Look, before we go any further, I want to say something. I appreciate that you brought me to see my sister, and that you, well, that you were there to talk me down after we left. You're a true friend. I just wanted to tell you that. Aww. Um, I feel the same way. Well, now that that's out of the way, I, Aww. at your service. You're so cute. Uh, what other questions can I ask you? If you were raised in the Chantry, have you never... Never... Never what? Had a good pair of shoes? <laughs> Sex. <laughs> oh, so that's what we're talking about. I admit I've never had a woman just 
come out and ask me like this, that's for sure. Lols. I myself never had the pleasure. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course. But, you know. Hmm. Uh, oh, oh, that's so cute. You're a virgin. Cute? <laughs> well, well, hearing that from a beautiful woman does make me feel much luckier. I'll say that. <laughs> you think I'm beautiful? Of course you are, and you oh. know it. You're ravishing, resourceful, and all those other things you probably hurt me for not saying. Uh, fair enough. I would never hurt you. Nor I, you. These are cute. Let us be off then. <laughs> Lest your risque talk make my ears blush. Aww. That's cute. That is cute. Alright, let's talk to Sten. Let's see what infinite words of wisdom he has. Yes. Mm, what were you doing in that cage? Sitting, as you observed. Do you have to be so literal? No, it's a choice, not a necessity. See, I don't think it's the li uh... Eh, just tell me. I did. Parshera. Was there anything else? Fair enough. I want to discuss something you mentioned. Speak, then. You said something earlier about mages? We have no mages such as you do. We have beasts in the shape of men who perform tricks. Well, why don't you have mages? We have mages. We simply don't have the sort you do. Okay. Well, what sort do you have? Our mages are controlled to do less harm than yours. They have their tongues cut out and are kept in pens. Wow. Why have magic at all if it's so evil? We live in the world and magic is part of it. One might as well reject the sky. Arshera, are we going to fight the darkspawn or chatter until they grow bored and leave? Let's go. As you wish. Yeah, you can... Sometimes when you talk to Stan, it's more of the type of... Because you're two, you're two completely different... Uh cultures and i'm not talking just different between dwarves and humans i mean like dwarves and like almost like a completely another world yes um what else would i want to discuss Speak, then. what do you mean your mages are beasts i misspoke they are not beasts beasts learn eventually what's so terrible about magic mages is there some reason you insist upon discussing this I'm just trying to figure you out. I applaud your attempt to pursue knowledge, irritating as it may be. Cool, thanks. Can we move on? Okay. As you wish. See, just, you you have to understand that when you talk to him, if, like, there's certain subjects, if you feel like they're gonna go, they're going around in circles, or, like, don't, don't make fun of his beliefs, like, uh, like with the mages, if you say like, oh, that's not right, that, you know, your clothes mind, blah, 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 don't do that. That's bad. Yes. Let me see. Speak then. What did you mean about human wisdom? Perhaps if humans sought wisdom beyond the walls of chantries, they might find it now and then. Hmm. Mm, true. Wisdom comes from the ancestors, not some song. A pity that only your dead are enlightened. Well, what do you mean by that? Wisdom is like breath. You need it, but no other can give you theirs. Hmm. How are you supposed to find it, then? It's everywhere. In every moment of eternity, there is a chance to find it. You have only to reach for it. There is little point in pursuing this. We should move on. Okay. As you wish. And also, if he says something like that, it's also best to just stop as well. Because he's like, if you push him, he gets a little cranky. All right, Morgana. Morgiana. Person I don't like. I await your command. So life in the wilds must have been very lonely. At times, perhaps. 
A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. Hmm. And did they speak back? Don't be foolish. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. Mm, can't imagine Flemeth was pleased. She was not. Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. Hmm. Well, Flemish was right, no doubt, uh, you know, thinking about her teachings and all. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Interesting. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. Well, they made you stronger, didn't they? They did indeed. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. Yeah, she's more of a of a a realist in a sense, like uh you know, she was taught, like she said, she was taught survival and stuff, so trying to be pretty or, you know, falling in love is, doesn't matter. It's just getting stronger, you know, get stronger, be more powerful, and try not to die. I await your <laughs> command. Uh, let's see what else so, I ask here. full of questions, are you? <laughs> hmm. How did you become a shapeshifter? I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's. Taught over many years in the wilds, the chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Mm, your mother has been doing this for some for a long time then. Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. <laughs> she has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Mm. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? Mm. I've never heard of magic like that before. No? Tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded law from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could. But as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. Hmm. That's good. Such traditions need to be preserved. I am surprised you think so. Still, it is a pleasant thing to hear. Well, I'm a frickin' dwarf. Uh, can you change into other human forms as well? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. Hmm. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is, no, my human form is the only one I possess. Interesting. Do you spend a lot of time as an animal? There were nights when the wilds called to me, tis true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf. 
listened as a cat prowled shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human. I am under no illusions to the contrary. Hmm. And what do other animals think of you when you're changed? They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Mm. Thus, they cannot speak, even were I to ask. Interesting. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? Nah, I think your abilities sound quite useful. A most practical opinion. Far more so than any man I have spoken to. Yeah, man. But enough of such talk. Let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. Okay. You always have to keep in mind who you're talking to and kind of like what their beliefs are and the like. Alright. Let's talk to... Let's see. We got... Who the hell are you? The Templars of the Chantry stand ready, Grey Warden. Huh. Do you need anything? There are always areas to improve on, Grey Warden. The most useful for my talents are runes. <gasps> okay, I think. I'll have to look this up. But if I recall, depending on who you get to help you, you put items in these chests. And I think the more you give them, the stronger the army you're supposed to be get at the end of the game. I'll have to look that up because I could be wrong. But I want to make sure because if that's the case, I'm going to definitely be buying a lot of runes and stuff. Because that would be really helpful. Oh, it's been a long day. Rest. Rest would be welcome. Uh-oh. Are you all right? Yes, yes, of course. I am just a little weary. As you may have noticed, I'm no spring chicken. Aw. Well, there's still some life in those old bones, Abbot. Thank you. You're very kind to say so. But in all honesty, I do not know how many years I have left in me. I have lived for such a long time. But there is always something else to do. Yep. And I have to keep going in order to do it. I think I will be glad when I am done. Hey, don't say those things. We still need you. Oh, no. I'm not the sort of person that leaves things unfinished. I'll see this through. I promise. Oh, I do like Wynn. She's like that neat grandmotherly mother type type of deal. Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Mm. Well, I've heard many stories. You are younger than I, and your nerves yet have some steel in them. Did you feel any fear facing the abominations? Well, I was uh, terrified. They're quite horrendous looking. Ugh. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. Oh, I can imagine. Hmm. Um, but it is this knowledge that drives you to be cautious. One slip. All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone. Replaced by madness. And there is no turning back. Or at least that's what they say. Hmm. You have doubts? Of late, I have begun to wonder if... If there is any way an abomination can be... Cured. Or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity. Their humanity. Hmm. So you're saying if one retains one's humanity, one is not an abomination. Yes. It is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. 
Oh, I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. Welcome. Sometimes you just gotta... Now, I don't know why wins like Alistair, her... Excuse me, her approval goes a very slow. Is there something you need? Mm, I'd like to ask you something about the circle. I will answer to the best of my ability. What do you think will happen to the circle now? So many are gone. They will need new enchanters. Perhaps they will look to Orle or Antiva. It will be difficult for a while, but I have no doubt that the circle will recover. What was life like in the tower? I would be lying if I said it was easy. First, there were rules, and we were constantly watched to make sure we behaved appropriately. Then there was the study of magic. We had to cast the spells just so, control the effects completely. Wow. A single word spoken incorrectly, a gesture out of sync, and lack of focus. And we needed to have perfect focus, or we would be in danger. Man, I can't even imagine trying to cast spells under pressure than in a battle. Good lord. Hmm. Well, at least you learned the dangers of magic from the circle. Without the circle and my mentors, I would not have been where I am today. And there was joy in life at the circle. The joys of fellowship in knowing that you were not alone in your struggles. In spite of everything, I was happy in the tower. And I loved it. Aww. Oh, nothing out of that one. Sometimes you could just talk to the people and just get some information. You don't always get uh, approval. I... Have I ever told you I really like the way you wear your hair? Yeah, really? It's so stubborn sometimes. It's very nice, and it suits you. Simple. Not like the elaborate hairstyles we wore in Orle. They involved flowers, ribbons, jewels... One year, feathers were all the rage, and Lady Elise decided she needed to outdo everyone else, and actually wore live songbirds in her voluminous hair. The <laughs> chirping was quite charming for a while, but you must realize, terrified little birdies often have loose bowels. Oh, huh. poor birds. Yes, I don't envy them. She never washed her hair. But no. I was trying to say something nice to you, wasn't I? Oh, forgive me. My mind wanders so. It's just that I... I feel so comfortable talking to you. Like I could say anything and you wouldn't judge me. Oh, well, we are friends, aren't we? Yes, very much so. I haven't felt this close to anyone in a long time. I really enjoy your company. Well, you are a treasured friend, Liliana. Thank you. I am honored that you feel that way. Now, unlike um, things, uh, games like Mass Effect and all, you don't really know what things that you will say that will take you down a romance line. Uh, they didn't have it in the first one. I think they brought it into the second game. But in here, it's more like you're just talking to it. It's like, whoa, you know, you didn't realize that you were, you know, doing anything like that. Because I believe Leliana and Zevran are the bisexual characters. And Alistair will only go with a female. And the same thing with Morgan will only go with a male. So I'm, I'm, from what I'm recalling. Okay, guys. Well, our 30 minutes are up. Or I'll be spending all day talking to our party members. But, yeah, at least we got rid of some items. So, I'll see about trying to make some more stuff off camera. And then we get back. We will get back to doing some side quests. So... This is Angel Terry. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.